This is episode two with Director of Basketball Academy and School Program Development at Tax Sports, Tyrone Stevenson. Welcome to TAC Talk presented by TAC Sports. My name is Coach Mitchell, one of the many, many amazing coaches we have here at TAC Sports. And every week, we will be discussing a variety of sports topics or ways for you to improve as an athlete in your own individual sports and your overall health. We have another great talk for you this week. And as always, I appreciate you tuning into this episode. Now, let's get this talk started. Let's go! For you to become the best in whatever you thrive to achieve, you need to go through a process of development. More specifically, for sports, player development. We are lucky enough today to have Tyrone Stevenson here talking exactly about that. He's a certified basketball coach with Canada Basketball and has managed Tyndale's University varsity basketball team as a head coach for both men and women for three years. We appreciate you sitting down with us and spending some time out of your busy schedule. Thank you, Mitchell. (laughs) So let's get right to it. And these questions aren't just going to be for basketball, they're going to be about overall player development, but for today we're going to be kind of focusing on more basketball because you are director of basketball attack sports. Sounds good. So the first question is, tell us how big drills are in player development and practice. So when it comes to drilling players um, in basketball or any sport realistically, Mm -hmm. um, we come to practice in order to gain mastery of the sport. Yeah. So what we do instead of coming without a plan where we just want to play the game and learn it all at once, drills are designed to help specialize in the different skills that are required in order to be a master at that sport. Mm -hmm. So it's broken down where we have fundamental skills that transfer from sport to sport. So things like how to properly train or how to properly warm up or stretch. And we have the fundamental skills for the sports itself. So in terms of basketball, things like dribbling a ball, passing a ball, shooting a ball. Um, Those are the fundamental skills that we like to train at the beginning and then we have advanced skills so if we break our drills down in those three categories then we can develop each of those skills at a higher pace that they can master those um, particular skills on their own and then as a whole the athlete becomes developed Uh, if a player came up to you and asked for help and uh, and it doesn't matter just for asking help in specific skill or anything what is the process you go through to help that player with that skill and like how hard is it to find that right drill to help him or her right so when we, when it comes to drilling any particular skill it really is just repetition we're mm-hmm. trying to create muscle memory we're trying to create a habit yeah so for one if a player comes to me and asks me to improve in one particular skill mm-hmm. it's easy to find drills because one i already know their mindset mm-hmm. is ready for whatever drill i bring them yeah um it's a little bit more challenging when you just have a player who doesn't know the game. Then you have to really um, get into their mindset. What are the fundamental skills and have them really push those. Mm-hmm. And then you can start looking into the more advanced drills. So finding drills is just a matter of something that will keep them engaged, but that still works on that particular skill that they want to improve. Mm-hmm. Um, continue talking about mindset. Uh, are players born with that aggressive mindset to get down in the dirt or they have to like achieve it kind of right so when you say aggressive Mm -hmm. there are a lot of players who don't have controlled aggression yeah Um, they're extremely competitive Mm -hmm. Um, but what a coach is looking for is things like Um, the level of resolve or determination they have Mm -hmm. and that really stems from what it is they're intending to achieve in practice or as an athlete Mm -hmm. so who are they trying to become as an athlete is what really gears that so you are kind of some players have that naturally and some players um, they develop it whether it's from their coach or just being in an environment that Mm -hmm. is competitive Um, so one thing that you can do to look for that is set up a challenge okay and you observe how they approach that challenge. Is it, are they the type that 
100% has to find a way to succeed at it. Mm-hmm. If they don't succeed, what is their reaction to that? Okay, yeah. And that's how you kind of determine, okay, these are the players with the resolve and the determination to get it. And if they don't have that, then you want to set lower milestones, but encourage them and really celebrate when they do mm-hmm. um, achieve those little milestones. And that sort of helps to build that determination because now they're seeing the success and they've got a bit of a supporting group with them. And that's kind of one of the primary roles of a coach um, is to help them get to that next level mm-hmm. and find enjoyment in having success in reaching these milestones. Okay, that makes sense. So when we're looking at, let's say, experienced players, that when you do drills with them, they do it. Any drill they do, they do it the way you like it and they do it almost perfectly. But Sometimes you don't see that actually come out in their game when you're playing five on five, three on three. Yeah. Have you ever experienced that before, or uh, that happens all the time? Yeah, um, it happens frequently mm-hmm. with younger athletes, but it happens even at the college level. Yeah. Um, one of the things is that we have to understand is that when you are coaching a drill, all it is is they're doing a task as you have asked them to. In an isolated environment. Right. right? And but once there's competition, now there are other players there that are sort of there's more pressure. Mm-hmm. There's pressure from teammates. There's pressure from the defense. There's mm-hmm. pressure in their own mm-hmm. mindset. That's they, when the, they, that's when the basketball IQ starts to kick in in games. Right, right. Even even the things like um, <clears throat> the determination or the aim and the purpose of what yeah. they're doing the, um, doing the sport for. Um, so when we add in that factor of pressure, it makes it tougher for them to really focus on the skills per se because mm-hmm. you're not thinking of the steps you've taken to to do that skill you're thinking of i need to score a basket or i need to play defense things yeah. like that so what we have so the reason why we drill in practice is so that we don't have to think mm-hmm. it's more we can focus on the game itself and overcome that pressure because the skill itself is natural mm-hmm. So the more the less you need to think of the mm. steps to do your skill, which comes through more practice, mm. um, then the more you can focus on overcoming the pressures of succeeding in that in executing it, mm. and um, and that's really the difference. When, once you once you add that pressure, now it's time to use your skills in a natural setting. Mm-hmm. So basically, for them to have it come out in game, right. you need to just keep working at it is that kind yeah, of it? Yeah, it basically it needs to be fluid. So fluid. practice okay. is something where when we come to train, it's not just to get the skill down. Mm-hmm. It's to get it down so much that I don't even have to say it anymore. Yeah. So that when the game comes on, mm-hmm. we're not we're not going back to a reminder, "Hey, remember how we do a jump shot?" Yeah. And then we go through the beef acronym with them. We don't want to do that anymore. We want them to practice it so much that as soon as they step on the court, they just know their their mm-hmm. arms and legs already do the motions. And kids should be doing this at home, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The more, th- like, especially at the when it comes to the fundamental skills, we want them to train as often as possible. And um, one of the the best ways to remember is. 10,000 hours to become a master at something. Yeah. So it's not likely that we're going to do 10,000 together unless mm-hmm. you're part of a full week all year round. Mm-hmm. But if you can work on the fundamental skills at home and add it to your training program, that yeah. will accelerate it 100%. Oh, it makes sense, yeah. Uh, so basketball has changed a lot since it kind of first started. Right. What are some of the positive trends you see happening right now and as well the negative? Right. So one of the positives is um, the emergence of sports camps or sports training. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that it's much more accessible to get that training in a camp setting or um, even on a team. There are a lot of teams out there where kids can really start to work on their skills and and get proper coaching. And I also like the trend where coaches are starting to take it more serious and getting certified Mm -hmm. to do it. And that's helping the development 100%, especially long term. Um, The one trend that I would say is questionable, obviously, there are some athletes and that are 
that are really good mm -hmm. and parents want to push them to become professionals yeah and one of the things that i find is that especially when you say things like um, aau programs we find that it's more of a showcase rather than continuing to develop them so that they can play at that next level yeah because once you're trying to become a professional you have to train as a professional so even though a lot of these players are more skilled than the league they're in currently mm -hmm. they need to continue to develop at that higher level with the proper training okay um one to make sure their skills are up to par once they're ready to transition to professional mm -hmm. and two to prevent injuries and i find that if you just let them sort of play free-flowing without continuing to develop them they'll start to lose those disciplines that they've grown to yeah. become the players they are today and that will translate and will start to affect them as they play against elite athletes yeah. later on that makes sense keep continue talking about aau um, and player development what is like a percentage of time should be spent with player development aau uh stuff like or like straight the conditioning like what's the percentage kind of say right so again when you're for young athletes, um, we want to focus on those fundamental skills, probably 80%. Okay. And not so much on strength and conditioning. They're, they're young. They're going to have yeah. the energy. As you're older, um, that's As you get older and it becomes clear that this is the path you want to take, you want to become a basketball player, mm -hmm. then you start to shift a little bit more into... Uh, training the body strength and conditioning specifically to your sport yeah um, and you start moving into the advanced skills so that you can keep up with the other athletes that are in that in that um, level and in that sport mm -hmm. and also in terms of playing we want to get them in game as much as possible we want them to have as much game experience as possible so the older you get then the more you want to you want to be in a team setting yeah and make sure you have a coach that is focusing on developing you as a team player because basketball is a team sport exactly so as you're young you're learning all the individual skills and then you get older you start to work on things like uh, mentality mindset mm -hmm. confidence things like that and how to play as a team so basketball IQ those are the things that kind of separate players at the high school level and college level um, from those who just make it based on talent. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to talking about one of the negative trends we see with parents pushing their kids to do AU right. and everything, what can parents do to help their kids out in their player development? Um, obviously, this is a tough one because parents are, are oftentimes just as passionate as their kids. Exactly. Right? Um, but realistically, the best thing for parents to do is be an encouraging source. Yeah. Um, so making sure that if this is the path that their child wants to take, mm -hmm. they are sort of that support line. Yeah, that rock. Um, but once you bring them to a gym and you have a coach, mm -hmm. then you kind of have to allow that coach to develop their players. Yeah, we always have those parents that are yelling from the sidelines. Right, right. And especially in games because we also have to remember that one – if a parent undermines a coach while they're on the bench, yeah. then the kids lose a bit of respect for their coach exactly. because their parents are in the background. Mm -hmm. And two, it also affects their gameplay mm -hmm. because now there's some there's a distraction. When you're when you're on the basketball court, your mindset should be on that game mm -hmm. and whatever it is the coach is trying to to get the team to do. Yeah. So the last thing any child or athlete should have is another voice on the outside that's not on the bench trying to give pointers or giving anything really mm. that's going to distract them from the team because yeah. the team is listening to one source yeah and that goes back to the mindset that when you're in game you might have learned all these drills but there's other stuff in your head during right, the game right and that makes exactly. sense so i know you're coaching the tac academy team this year yes uh do you want to talk briefly about that and Right, so this year we are starting a rep um, program, mm -hmm. and this is just, we, we have a lot of athletes that come through our training schools, and yeah. um, they've been developing over the years, so we've put together a U12 team, All right. 
and uh, the idea behind that is now they're ready as I was speaking to earlier mm -hmm. um, they're at that stage now where it's time for them to start really competing yeah and what we generally do in our training programs is we have them compete against each other and we have also started a house league yeah and that's sort of the base stepping, um, stone, stepping stone to team up. play mm -hmm. um, but with the rep now it's competitive so this is for our athletes who have really shown that they're they're ready to showcase those skills that they've Committed. been learning over the years and make a commitment to a team because mm -hmm. at this stage now for them um, they're going to be getting ready to move into high school where they have to make that commitment and understand what team play is really about mm -hmm. so we have a traveling team this is a u12 team that um we'll be playing year round well sorry not year round but um for the entire basketball season which goes till april and we're gonna have regular practices we're gonna have away games mm -hmm. we're gonna have some home games so it really gives that feel of that professional setting yeah um, but we still have the quality coaches that we have at our training schools mm -hmm. that will be with them the whole time mm -hmm. and it's uh, and I encourage uh, as many players um, to come out to these things we're also gonna have trainings where other players can drop in and play sorry practice with the team that's okay and um, practice with other players that are ready for that step in uh, sorry, in preparation for the future where we're going to have multiple teams yeah, put okay. together. That's awesome. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank I appreciate you. that. Uh, looking forward to seeing you around at, around the TAC camps, TAC training sessions. Awesome. All right, thank thank you. you. Well, there it is. I really hope you understood and remember Tyrone's thoughts because he had some amazing advice on the mindset of development in players and how repetition is the key to develop in anything you do. If you'd like this episode, please share it. You can also follow TAC Sports on Instagram at TAC Sports. I just want to leave you with this one question before we end this podcast. What can you do to develop as an athlete and also as a person? I would love to hear your response. So you can send messages on Instagram as well. As we stated before, TAC Sports. That is our account. That concludes this episode, and as always, I'd like to thank our guest, Tyrone Stevenson, for coming on the podcast. And always remember, grow, learn, and lead. Thank you. Have a good week. DJ Alex, play us out. <laughs>